Hello everyone, I'm Vincent Racaniello and this is Virus Watch, the weekly video report on what's happening in the amazing world of viruses. Today, we're gonna to tackle the thorny question that always generates a lot of discussion. Are viruses alive? First, we have to define life. It's not very easy to do, and many people disagree on the exact definition on what is living. But we have to have a definition, otherwise we can't answer the question of whether viruses are alive or not. So here we go. Something that's living should have most of these following properties. It should be composed of one or more cells. It should have homeostasis. This is the ability to regulate important properties such as pH or temperature. It should have the ability to make or generate energy, to grow, and to adapt to new environments by evolution. Also to respond to stimuli like a plant moving towards light. And of course, it must be able to make more of itself to reproduce. Here's a model of a simple virus. It happens to be polio virus. The virus particle consists of a protein shell, which you can see is this plastic shell that protects the RNA genome that's inside of it. On its own, this virus particle doesn't meet any of the requirements for being alive. It's not a cell. It doesn't have homeostasis. It can't make energy, can't adapt to new environments. It can't evolve and it can't reproduce. This particle here can't do any of these things. But wait, viruses do evolve, right? And they do replicate, of course. So what's going on? The key is that all the things carried out by viruses happen only after the virus enters a cell. That's why we call viruses obligate intracellular parasites. In order to make more viruses, they need to physically get inside of a cell. The virus genetic information, whether it's RNA or DNA, enters the cell and it reprograms the cell so that all of the cell processes are now directed to the making of new viruses. That fact lets us answer the question of whether viruses are alive. But first, we have to define what we mean by virus. I define a virus as an organism with two phases. One phase is the virus particle. Whether it's a simple virus like the one I'm holding or much bigger virus particles with huge genomes and complicated structures like the giant Mimi viruses and Pandora viruses, whether it's any of those, that virus particle can't do anything. It can't reproduce, it can't evolve without getting inside of a cell. So that's why I think the virus particle is clearly not alive. However, once the virus is inside of a cell, the virus infected cell is certainly alive. It's simply a cell, which we all agree is living, that's been taken over by a virus. The living cell has been reprogrammed to make more virus particles. In many cases, the virus infected cell will eventually be killed by infection. But until that happens, it's very much alive, producing new virus particles. A virus then is an organism with two phases. The virus particle, which is not alive, and the infected cell, which is clearly alive. When most people say virus, they usually mean the virus particle. But there's a difference between virus particle and virus infected cell. The virus particle isn't alive, but the infected cell is. I think this is a good solution to the problem that a virus particle can't possibly be alive, but has the potential to be living once it enters the cell. A virus, the organism, with two phases is clearly alive. That's Virus Watch for June 13th, 2016. For more in-depth discussions about viruses, check out our science show this week in virology at microbe.tv 
slash twiv. I'm Vincent Rackin-Yellow, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>